Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of PGA Tour 2K23. We are about to start the Arnold Palmer Invitational at the Bay Hill Club and Lodge. In the last tournament we defeated our rival Xander Shuffley. I wonder who we're going to play next. Let's go golfing. Justin Thomas is going to be at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Challenge accepted. Two K Sports and the PGA Tour are delighted to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Arnold Palmer Invitational is about to begin. Pleased you could join us for this first round action. I'm Luke Elvey alongside Rich Beam in the booth, and it's a hello to Henny Koyak down on the course following our featured group. Hi Luke, I'm very much looking forward to bringing you the action from the golf course for this week's featured group. Now there is a sense of maybe fear, heightened competition this week, as this player has said that they're starting up a rivalry with their playing partner. So it looks like they aim to beat Justin Thomas. Should add a bit of extra excitement to our coverage today, Henny. Oh, that goes without saying, Luke, but Justin Thomas will not be easy to beat. I don't think there's a more competitive man out there on tour. No, you're absolutely right there. He's a complete player. It'll certainly be interesting to keep an eye on this rivalry throughout the event. Let's see what kind of tone he sets for himself today. That's tidy. We'll take us through the approach shot. It's uh, not easy to run the ball onto the green. It's not. Your approach shot has to come in high and soft with a lot of spin as there's just not much depth to this green. Not much movement either. Fairly flat, although there is a ridge that bisects this green in two. You want to make sure that you're on the correct side of that ridge to have a good opportunity to make the putt. That's inside the house of opportunity. 13 feet to the cup. It's on a great line. That's inside the range. And that should secure the par on this one. And that's an opening hole par for this player. Nothing wrong with an opening par, just easing their way into this round. The second hole is a long par three, old typical Redan style at 230 yards. Yes, the green runs from right to left and chases away from the player on the tee. You can hit it short right and have it bounce on to the flag six that are on the right. However, when they're in the back left, you don't want to come up short and left in a low area. That'll leave a very difficult up and down. Well, what happened there? No green in rig, but a chance to save their par. Wow, that almost went in the hole. Well, I hope he makes this one. It's for par. Oh, gee, that line was looking good, wasn't it? And that puddle drop. Well done. And this effort by Justin Thomas. He's currently ahead in this rivalry. Let's see what happens. Oh, so close. Oh, what a big putt to make that one. Yeah, that 
is not what you want to come up against mid-round, mid-rivalry. That was mean. Rich, the first exposure to the famous lake here at Arnold Palmer's Bay Hill Club and Lodge is the third. There's a lot of intimidating tee shots on this golf course, Luke. This could be number one. Water down the left-hand side you obviously want no part of, but if you miss it right in the rough, that is very gnarly and nasty to come out of. The green works away from the player, moving from right to left. The miss is out to the right, but watch out. It's awfully quick coming down that green. Don't chip it or put it in the water. Okay, let's get back to it, shall we? Do you like the view from where you're standing, Henny? Setting up here from about 140 yards. And this player seems to not be too intimidated having Justin Thomas in their group today. That was a fantastic shot into this green. Lining up the birdie putt here. Well, what a way to bounce back. Nice putt to hold. So after that hole, he's now up to even with the card. The first of the par fives rich the fourth hole. Yes, Luke, you got out of bounds on the right-hand side. That shouldn't come into play for the players, but those bunkers down the left-hand side certainly will. If you get a good tee shot away and you find the fairway, the second shot uphill to this par five, you can reach, but still lots of trouble lurking around this green. Rich, I love being back at Bay Hill every time because you get to honour the absolute legend of our game, the King Arnold Palmer. There's just an air of something extra special this week, isn't there? When you step on the property here at Bay Hill, you know you're in the presence of something special. Arnold Palmer's legacy was really built here, wasn't it? Granted, he absolutely brought everything he had to the PGA Tour, but when you come to Bay Hill and you have all the monuments, especially the statue right there to the right behind number one and number 10 tee boxes, you just get a chill down your spine like, man, this is some kind of awesome place. I cannot wait to tee it up here. And saying that, Mr. Palmer did not <laughs> leave a knockoff course. That's very easy for these players. But listen, they come back here every year knowing that they need and they want to honor the gentleman who helped form the legacy of the PGA Tour. And that's why they're out here playing for all the money. Second shot here on the fifth. Opting for the 9-iron. That could play. Terrific approach and a chance for a birdie here on the fifth. And a fantastic look upcoming. Good opportunity coming up to move into the top ten on the leaderboard. Ooh, right by the hole. Well, this would be a good one to make. It's for par. That was a top-level approach shot, but unfortunately they walk off the green with a par. Setting up here with a very long putt. It doesn't matter how you hit it if you can hold putts like that. And with it, he'll move to a couple under par. Our current leader is up by three shots. Now we head to the famous par five, sixth rich. A lot of players are thinking birdie, maybe even eagle. Out to the right, most definitely the widest part of the fairway, just left of the left-hand bunker out there. We'll leave a layup out to the right, and then you just have a short pitch on from there. This is a really solid birdie opportunity. And here we are with the third shot. In the hole! Absolutely brilliant. The rarest <laughs> of shots. Oh, and up he goes, marching to the top of the leaderboard. And it's worth taking another look at that one. Great feel, great judge, great speed. Yeah, I like this.
Now five strokes behind. Let's have a look at the seventh hole of par three. Finally, you have a green that pitches back towards you ever so slightly, Luke, but still coming into it with a good six, five iron from 195 yards. It's still a difficult task to get it close. Oh, that was flushed. Not a bad approach. Grab the putter from the caddy. You're dancing. Never seen a scorecard that doesn't look good with a two on it. Oh, just missed. That's disappointing. Just a four footer remaining. This is what they have left for par. Well done. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Our leader is enjoying a three-stroke advantage. The par four eighth, Rich, a challenging tee shot and approach. Love this tee shot here, Luke. The fairway camera is pretty good from right to left, kicking the golf ball towards that bunker. So make sure to take one less club off this tee. From there, you make sure that you take enough club for your second shot to carry the front edge. If not, that golf ball will come falling back off the green into the drink. Justin Thomas, major champion, world number one player. Really has all the attributes, doesn't he, Rich? He does. His focus on the, his own game is is amazing I, I think that this kid really understands how to play the game he's got all the shots but he doesn't try and get up there and hit it as hard as he can every single time he gets out there and he learns how to play the game hit the finesse shots when you need it take some risks when you have when you need to but also back off when you don't need to this kid is a real deal complete game from head to toe currently at minus four overall Let's take a look at the final hole on the front nine, the ninth, and what a tough tee shot it is. It is it ever. Players want to avoid the bunker down the left-hand side, so inevitably they push it out to the right-hand side, into the rough, into the trees. Now they've got really very little chance of reaching the green in two. So this is probably the most difficult tee shot on this front nine, and one they have to find the fairway with. Taking aim from around 190 yards here. Four shots behind our leader. Great looking shot this. Tell you what, they've got their rhythm going there. That's another green in reg. Well, the practice is paying off here, Luke. This player is relentless. Good stroke. Now let's head over and see what JT's been doing. He's just coming off a drop shot on that last hole. A chance to get amongst the action of the top 20. This putt drops. That'll sting a bit. So after that effort, this is what the leaderboard looks like. So far, so good, but it's only early days, Rich, in this rivalry. Up early on their rival, which is exactly where you want to be, but a lot of golf still to go until the end of the tournament. And what are we looking at here, Henny? setting up here from about 145 yards this one looks to be on a pretty good line that was special right on four feet should make this one and racking up their fifth booty of the day and that will move into six under par the par for 11th resembles the par for third, doesn't it? The big lake on the left-hand side. It does. It just has a little more landing room here on the left-hand side, however. But if you lay back, be prepared to go in with a long iron. If you take the driver out and successful, you now turn this challenging hole into almost a birdie opportunity. 
That's a good looking shot there. And this effort by Justin Thomas. Birdied their last hole. Getting ready to play their third. Oh, wouldn't that have been nice? And this putt is to move into a share for the lead. He's got a par putt here. Let's see if he can make it. In the end, that will be a disappointing par after such a great approach shot. And that would have tied the lead for this player. Disappointing to say the least. Lovely rhythm there, Rich. That's going to work every time. One win is good, but two wins would be great. But this player is really going after it here, Rich. I'll tell you what, what a sensational play. This player stepped up their game, a bold play, hopefully a bold reward. Come on, don't be shy. In the hole! Oh, that's a sensational punch. What an there. eagle. What about the glimpse they just gave their rival? Come and catch me now. Why not take another look at that effort? What an amazing putt from way out. Yeah, that's some positive momentum now. Right to the top of the leaderboard they go. Number 13, not a long hole by anyone's stretch, but the pond in front of the green really plays havoc. It does, more so than it should. It's just a long iron or a hybrid off the tee. Find the fairway down the right-hand side, open up the angle for your second shot, and it's obvious, you just don't want to miss your second shot right. So bail out to the left-hand side, make a par. Pretty simple. Well, every week, there's a certain bunch of players that everyone keeps an eye on. This one seems to be exactly in that company. One of the strong favorites to win, don't you think, Rich? It's never a surprise when you speak this player's name. They've been so good all year long. They've got to be one of the favorites, not only for this tournament, but for also for the season-long FedEx Cup. Even for the day, Big time play that one at the right time too. And look out guys, this rivalry looks like it's going to get pretty interesting today as he's making up some ground on his playing partner. Ooh, good look at a birdie here. And maintaining top spot on the leaderboard after that. And another of the uphill par threes, the 14th Rich. This is such a difficult hole because it, this tee shot lines you up over on the left-hand side where you'll find those bunkers. But if you bail out to the right, well, now you're running into a low area that you have a pretty difficult chip shot to a green that historically is the firmest and fastest on this golf course. I well, shot that. That should find the surface. Luke. That did not end up where you said it was going to. It's in the rough. And he's down there. You got a read? This one's 13 feet from the cup. This putt to try and save their par. Looking good. Yeah, good job. Nice par. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? And after that effort, this is how the leaderboard looks. Our leader is a couple of shots up at this stage. As we get into the closing stretch here at Bay Hill, the 15th, the par four. Strong par four, dog legs from left to right. 
don't miss it out to the right in that bunker. Not only are you hitting your second shot out of the trap, but also you've got some magnolia trees to deal with. This is a very difficult fairway to find because that fairway does chase away from you just over that bunker. This is a very strong par four. Looks to have chosen the seven iron. I'm pretty sure they had their sights set on hitting the green there. Now, coming out of the rough, missing the green was always in the cards. Get in the hole! Oh! oh. Just a four footer remaining. Don't want to miss it. Could be costly. This is important. Big par putt here. That will work. Leading by a couple after that hole. Well, one of the great parts of the finish here of Bay Hills Club and Lodge, Rich, is the fluctuations in scoring, and it all starts here at the par 5 6 Luke, you got to take advantage of this par 5. It's just over 500 yards. Find the fairway. Don't foot with either of those bunkers out there. Second shot should be with a middle to long iron to a green that's surrounded by water on the left and bunkers on the right. But still, it's a great opportunity to make four or better. Fingers crossed for a good kick to the left. Well, take notes, folks. That's how you do it. And the birdie with big wings on the table here if they can make this one. Their short game has been very impressive. They've been really sharp today. Now let's head over and see what JT's been doing. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. Well played. Out of the rough, into the hole. Thank you very much. Well, that's got to have some impact on the scoreboard. Let's take a look. Our leader is up by four shots now. The par 317th Rich has got a wonderful atmosphere around. It looks visually quite stunning, but my word, it's a brute. This hole causes more stress for the players, I think, than any other hole on the golf course, with possibly the exception of number three. This green is nearly impossible to find as it is so firm historically through the years. You find the green, you make your three, and you're smiling earlobe to earlobe. Was on a good line. What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? He's got to be careful this doesn't get away from him here. This is downhill. Big chance here. Gee, he's making this look easy. Keeps surging ahead. Oh, that was a touch of class. I wouldn't mind seeing that again. Now this, this is how you putt. Take another look at this. So no change on the leaderboard for this player after that hole. Rich, as we head to the finishing hole here at Bay Hill, a famous finishing hole. So much drama over the years, predominantly by the great Tiger Woods. But most of the drama starts off the tee. It does. This is actually a semi-blind tee shot. There's a mound down the right-hand side of the fairway where you can't see the golf balls land, so players won't know whether they found the fairway or missed it right or even out on the left-hand side. Most iconic moments in all of golf, in my mind's eye, Robert Gomez holding his second shot here back in 1990 to claim the title. Looks to have opted for the eight iron. Oh, this would be handy if it could bounce right. Okay, that'll work. Trying to move to 13 deep here with this putt. Ouch, that hurts. And this one is for his par. And another round safely in the books. So there you have it. In the house, in top spot after the opening <laughs> round. Everyone likes to get off to a fast start, and they certainly have. Not bad whatsoever, but still just the opening day. Lots of golf left to play. However, 
it does give you a little boost of confidence going forward knowing that right now you're at the top of your form your game is good and you're in a good space well, another great day of action here at 2K Sports. On behalf of Rich Beam, the entire hardworking folks and team here, I'm Luke Elvey. We look forward to your company next time. Wow, oh wow, what a perfect round. You couldn't ask for a better opening round than that. We're minus 12 on the day, good enough for first place. Joseph Bramlett is minus seven in second place. And we also lead Tiger Woods and Lucas Glover, who are tied for third place at minus five. Our rival, Justin Thomas, he is all the way back in 34th place with a plus one. Now, we did start off a little shaky, but boy, did we ever turn up the heat when we cranked out three eagles and a pile of birdies, a couple of pars, and it was only that one uh, bogey that we had on the second hole. Everything else was flawless. We made some big putts. We almost got in trouble a couple of times. One of our eagles was a chipping eagle back on the sixth hole. It was just all in all a great round. That's going to bring today's video to a close. Please give this video a like if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one.